The spooky month of October continues as some long forgotten games and franchises return from the dead on our news roundup for October 8th, 2018. In 2016, Space Goat ran a successfully funded Kickstarter for an Evil Dead 2 board game, which ended up never actually being produced, leaving a lot of backers very unhappy. Now, Jasco Games is stepping in as they have announced that they have procured the rights to the Evil Dead 2 franchise, and they will be reproducing a new Evil Dead 2 game, also as a Kickstarter, with brand new rules using some of the same components as the old Space Goat one. One of the things they've announced they will also do is give a copy of the game to each backer for every game that gets made through this campaign of the original campaign. So they're trying to make those people who did not get the game happy by providing them a free copy. They have an entire list of all those original backers and they're gonna be getting it out to them. Uh, we have a whole uh, podcast episode on our YouTube channel where we interviewed Taylor Smith, who is the original designer of that game. So if you haven't heard about this whole controversy, we dive into it a lot there, but it sounds like they are not using any of his design. It sounds like they're just using some of the components, the artwork, and going with a brand new thing. They're actually using uh, Lynn Vander, they're partnering with, who they also partnered with for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, and I think a couple other projects as well. So uh, this is something that, I, I mean, I don't think anyone thought that this game would ever exist in any form, but this is definitely an interesting way to hear about it, and I wonder... Uh, why they're not using that. They haven't said, like, maybe they just couldn't get the rights to that design, but I wonder why if they tried that hard or if they wanted to put their own spin on it. I don't know, is, are you, do you want to play this game? <laughs> I, I mean, it's one of those things at this point, like I'd have to see and, and stuff. Like I didn't really, uh, I know you were much more interested in the first Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. But what I find sort of interesting is, and I think maybe, maybe it's part of the reason why they changed it to make it new, because everyone already sort of had an idea. But they didn't say we're giving away free ones. At least according to what you said, it's fr they're going to give one free one away for every one they sell. Right. <laughs> Which I sort of understand where they're coming from. But I have seen a lot of Kickstarters when, that I've backed that have failed. But when someone else took over, they're like, we're going to get you guys your pledge levels. I wonder if that was just sort of a weird way they phrased it. And it might be, but I think part of it is... If I recall, like it's been two years <laughs> yeah. since then, but it was like more of a heavy miniatures game, wasn't it? So it's a lot more to some like, extent. The games that I can think of where they've said that mm -hmm. were card games. Yeah, it does really make you wonder how are, they must be planning to really overfund this thing that they or that they have the extra money around to to do something like that because there were a lot of people who backed that game, and also I wonder if they're worried about. I have to wonder. Are there going to be a ton of people who aren't going to back this? Because they already they have that memory. You know, once bitten, twice shy. They they don't want to go after anything that has any even the slightest smell of that Kickstarter, which was just a disaster. Well, that, that's why I think one of the reasons why they're not just making they're remaking the game. Yeah. So it yeah. feels like it's not. That's definitely one of the reasons why. But the other thing is like if you were one of the previous backers, which you almost were, <laughs> would you back it again and be like they're just going to send me a free copy? Oh, well, yeah, no. I mean, I if they were going to send me a free copy, I would, I would not give them any money. So the question is, how much of a market is there left? It would be the... Yeah, they, they, I, it's really on them to really make the game look really good because that's, that's all they got going for them. They have to really sell people on it. Uh, and maybe there's still a sizable portion of like the casual audience who likes Evil Dead and d doesn't know or has forgotten about that other Kickstarter. Uh, they haven't announced a launch date for this yet, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll find out more information soon. Definitely very curious about it. Also still think it's kind of weird that Evil, they're calling it the Evil Dead 2 board game and not Evil Dead. It's like I guess it's a rights issue, but at any rate, uh, l let us know what you think. Earlier this year, we reported on a, an announcement from Fantasy Flight where they said they'd be ending their popular LCG, Android Netrunner, due to not being able to gain the rights to the Netrunner part of Android Netrunner. While this was sad, we did mention how the Android was still a big universe that they could take advantage of, and it seems they are. They have just announced a new RPG book, Android, Shadow of the Beanstalk. This is actually part of their Genesis system, which is this new system they've designed, which actually has a book already for one of their other worlds. But it actually uses its own dice, not the, like the common like 6 and D20, so you can't just switch dice around. 
You'll be familiar with this if you play probably any of their other RPGs. Almost all of them use their own unique dice system. But it is supposed to be designed to be a bit more uh, simple and easier for someone to pick up. This book does seem very interesting. The Beanstalk, if you don't know, is pretty much the space elevators in the world of uh, Android. And of Android, I was about to say Netrunner. And it's controlled by one of the big companies. But pretty much it allows you to play. You're playing more as the runners, not the corp from the sound of the description. And you're gonna allows the GM to have different stories in there. They actually suggest for you to buy the Netrunner book that they released a while ago. It's not really a, a source book with data points like you'd expect from a monster manual, but help you really understand the world of, of uh, Android. To, like understand even the, up to the colonies in Mars, which was, mm. I want to say the second to last cycle. <laughs> yeah, that's I correct. believe in uh, the Android I'll Network game. <laughs> the third, no second or us. third last one. Because yeah. I think it was uh, I think it was Mars, then like India and Africa were the last three, if I, re if I remember my cards. They we go did get the last box mm -hmm. and I've looked through it and it's pretty cool. And it's nice to see this because this is exactly what we said we wanted. Yeah, yeah. Using that property uh, for 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 new stuff because it's such a rich world mm -hmm. to, to play around in. One of the things I thought was really neat is uh, they said compared to the Genesis system, this has an entire new character creation process. It's and it sounds like even though it's part of that system, you could buy this book standalone and just play an Android themed RPG campaign, um, at least for the most part. And one of the things in character creation was you could get bonus bonuses in your stats, but you would owe favors to certain factions in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so like as you play, sort of like like owing something to the mob or whatever, they might come and find you as part of the story, which sounds like a fun thing to like let, give the GM ideas to put that stuff into the campaign. Well, not only that, there's some great ideas. And I think actually the Genesis book that initially announced, that's like, if you want to do your own campaign using Genesis, take this. I don't think it's like D&D yeah. &D when you need like, I think mm. from the idea of these source books, if you want to just play Netrunner, you only need to buy Netrunner stuff. Yeah, or, sorry, Android stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I know the Genesis one like is also works with any setting. Like you can do sci-fi fantasy. Right. Yeah, it sounds it sounds cool. I I hope it's a good fit for Netrunner. I also am thinking about you know even though I know they're different. I think there's some overlap between Android. I said Netrunner again. <laughs> Android and uh, Shadowrun. Well, the problem is I think why we're <laughs> saying that is it. We know it as Android Netrunner. It's how we came into it. Right. And if you think about it, Android feels much more generic than Netrunner. <laughs> yeah, it really does. But uh, but you know, I, I I wonder if there's how much of a market there is for because uh, I kind of feel like even though I think Netrunner is really cool, it's like one book. It's easy to jump into. Uh, but Shadowrun has like much more lore and stuff. Well, I actually think that's an adv ad uh, advantage to the, for Netrunner because what you could do, let's say you didn't really Android, you mean Android <laughs> for Android because if you let's say you liked the Android world, like you collect the cards, you like the characters, the idea of the universes, mm -hmm. and you just didn't like the the dice system, you probably could. I wouldn't be surprised if someone already. I mean, we're doing it before, but you could take this book and use it almost as just a knowledge source book. Yeah, and yeah. use the Shadowrun system if you really wanted to. Yeah, probably could. Probably could adapt it to whatever whatever makes you happy. Well, and it's just nice because that that is a heavy. This is not steampunk, cyberpunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A world that both of them exist in, and I think they're both great properties on by themselves. Yeah, yeah, but it is nice that you one and the other could sort of help balance and each probably this one balance, is more support each other. Yeah, probably this one's more uh, casual, more accessible to new RPG players, I would imagine. But you can uh, expect to see this out. I think you can pre-order it now, and actually will come with a novella, one of their little stories. Mm. Uh, no bonus cards like the uh, Arkham Horror ones that we reviewed. Mm. But I'm definitely Do curious that. to see, even though we barely have time for anything as it is now. <laughs> A brand new expansion is available for pre-order right now on Stonemaier Games' website for Scythe, the big hit from a couple of years ago, area control game with mechs and farming. If you haven't played it, we really loved it. Great game. And this new one is called Scythe Encounters. It adds a deck of 32 cards to the existing Encounters deck. You can play with them as a standalone or mix and match with the original cards. And what these cards offer are multiple choices that you can choose throughout the game once you receive one of them. And actually what's cool about these cards is that they are fan made. They were designed by fans who submitted them and then the designer, Jamie Stegmeier, actually reworked them and implemented them into the game to make sure they were balanced and incorporated well with all the other existing cards. Uh, we've seen a few previews that are up for some of these cards. I think some of them are really neat and uh, very, I think a little bit more outside the box than some of the base ones. There's one I like that actually lets you take someone else's 
uh, starting point. If they've left it, you can choose that and go there. And like all the other ones from the base, one of the things I loved about these cards is they're very thematic. So you'll have three choices and it's like, you can feed your family or you can abandon your family. And they all have mechanical uh, uh, impacts in the game that make sense for what you're doing. Um, so this is cool. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like what um, we saw Cosmic Encounter do with the fan-made expansion. Uh, it's it, it seems like a neat little final hurrah for Scythe. Yeah, I actually thought the last one was supposed to be the final one, but this is a perfect like end cap. It's the cherry on top. I think when you have a, a very fun game and, and a very uh, well made one, uh, even like Magic: The Gathering and stuff, some of the I think the one of the most interesting cards and like some of the Magic ones have been made, not as nearly like this. And Cosmic Encounter, you said with that expansion, mm -hmm. are the fan ones because there usually are, as you said, out of the box or weird. There's something like. It's because what a fan, when you sit, if you've been sitting at the table playing a game, you're like, what if this could happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, by letting, by coming up with those weird ideas and then saying it to the developer and the developer being like, why not? <laughs> yeah. And then did the final tweaks to make sure it's balanced, of course. But that's why those are sometimes the best expansions. Like, if you have the base scythe and that's all you had, I would probably suggest maybe buying this first. Yeah, I, well, I think it's it's definitely a good a good one. Also, if you've played it a lot, and it, like I think both ends can enjoy it because it add it does add that extra variability. But what's nice about it is it's one of those expansions that doesn't you don't have to learn anything new. Right. It's just you shuffle it in and you have a ton of new options right yeah. baked it right in, which is really cool. Um, it only goes for twenty bucks on, on their site right now for thirty two cards. So uh, yeah, if you're a Scythe fan, definitely check it out. Yeah, it is released in this December, and if you do pre order now, you'll get it before then. We're not done with old properties coming back from the dead. Once again, earlier this year, we talked about Toys R Us going out of business, closing all their stores, and some of you may have been able to pick up some board games for some really cheap prices. Now, usually when a company goes bankrupt, they pretty much put up all their assets, what's left, in sort of an auction to see if they can make more money and try to pay off all their debts. But apparently, today, uh, Tuesday, they announced from investors that they're actually going to cancel the auction. And they think they can make more money reopening Toys R Us. So Toys R Us will be coming back by the sound of it. It sounds like they're also going to partner with some other people to try to maybe do some new different things. Maybe open some stores, maybe only digital. We'll see what that really comes out to be. But this is really weird. And I feel like probably also a lot of the employees who were kicked out without severance and stuff are probably not in the greatest of moods to hear this. Uh, they're very unhappy. I've, you've, you can search online and find their tweets. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> people, are, people are unhappy. There's a lot of weird things to this. Uh, they have been very vague, at least from what I've seen, mm -hmm. about what their actual plans actually are. This, to me, is, very, is much shadier because it sounds like they may have, from the start, been planning this and intentionally got rid of their assets, fired everyone to save money, and now we're gonna relaunch as, like you said, maybe a digital service, maybe just even like a brand like for a for merchandise, like who knows? Look, look, they just happened to play Eclipse and they heard about <laughs> going bankrupt is actually how you do better. <laughs> they knew that was great. Yeah, but, but they canceled their bankruptcy. So that's very, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's well, they didn't cancel good. the bankruptcy. No, sorry, they canceled the auction. Oh, they canceled it. We're not doing it anymore. I wish money. you could do that. <laughs> Sir, you're in debt. I cancel my debt. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's like I wish, I, like the emotion I should be feeling is, yay. But instead I'm like, no, like you made me, you did this to me. Like the my negativity about Toys R Us going away is your doing, <laughs> and now it almost feels like such like a bait and switch. Like they, uh, like that, like they're just. I, I don't. I moved on. I've moved on now. I've gotten past it, and I don't want it anymore. For me, it, what, what's really thinking about because when I also saw when I first saw this was actually not through regular news, but actually through the Transformers sub subreddit. Where you see most of your news, actually. Oh yes. <laughs> But like someone was mentioned, like because of all the deals and how they didn't pay a lot of the companies, mm. like Hasbro and Lego, uh -huh. like if they did open a store or even online, are, will it be stocked? With like, are they are those companies going to be like, yeah, no? I mean, they'll still be competing with Amazon. Like nothing's really changed. So except that they just have they don't have a bunch of stores and rent to pay and employees to pay. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird uh, in terms of the board game world. I, honestly, I imagine, I doubt they're gonna 
they might launch like one or two stores is my guess. I'd be surprised. I don't think we're ever going to see. They're not going to come back like they used to be, but I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this whole thing just, we need a legal expert and maybe a financial expert to help uh, suss out. Help us. We need uh, the how to play instructions for this bankruptcy <laughs> game. <laughs> Board game releases from the last week. Leading the pack is Pictomania 2nd Edition, the new smaller box version of this drawing game from Czech Games. Next up is Critical Mass from Arcane Wonders, a mech dueling game for two to four players. You also got Most Wanted from North Star Games, a Western-themed poker-style game. Then there is Space Park, which is a space-themed game where you're going out in rocket ships and you have cool 50s-style settlements from Keymaster Games. We've actually played a lot of these. Yeah, yeah, I think we could definitely I, we would recommend Critical Mass. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. You should watch our Gen Con videos if you haven't seen us talk about that. Yeah, you bought the Pictomania second, even though you have the first. That's right. I, I like the new one because it's small. It takes mm -hmm. up half the shelf space. And uh, Most yeah. Wanted we've been playing mm -hmm. as well. And, it's, and it's, it's pretty fun. If you if you like, it's like a very light, casual style of poker. Yeah, it definitely it narrows down the deck to make it making hands much easier. It's not as because it's not as always just getting a simple pair. You really are dealing with only like uh, six through ace, so you've right. already knocked off a lot of numbers. It's like a party game with poker elements in it. Mm -hmm. anyway, those are all available right now. You can f talk to us about it in the comments down below, mm -hmm. which of course you shouldn't forget to like and subscribe because you should love us, please. <laughs> and of course, we'll probably actually talk about your comments in our m Visiting the Meeple Gallery videos. We just did one pretty recently. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but of course, we're in other places. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm sure we'll rise from the grave come October 30th. We like to go a day early to <laughs> avoid the lines. Yep, that's how we do. That's how we do things, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit News. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons so you get more board game content from Roll for Crit. Do it. Do it now.